Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to something a little bit differently. Um, this is a really cool printer to me. Uh, BQ was kind enough to send it to me. This is called the BQ Huracan and this is the first out-of-box Cartesian i3 style printer with clipper. And uh, that's really, really neat to me and that's why I wanted to do this review. So BQ uh, sent this to me. Um, we're going to talk about this printer a little bit, try to make like a little quick review on this printer. I've been using it for quite some time now and I'm really, really, really liking it. I think uh, BQ has done a great job here with this implementation and it makes sense to me now that they have the Manta boards. Um, this printer uses the Manta M4P board from Big Tree Tech as well as their CB1 module, which is kind of equivalent to our Raspberry Pi 3. So that you have a fully seamless integrated clipper onto this machine. And I think for people who like to tinker with their printer and mod, this is the standard for um, bed slinger i3 Cartesian style printers for sure. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's quickly go over the printer here uh, hardware wise and see kind of what BQ's done. They've definitely paid a lot of attention to detail here as far as the looks of it. Um, I've been told and on their marketing and stuff like that, it, it's been styled after the Lamborghini Huracan um, with like the grills and stuff like that here. Uh, these grills are for cooling. We have a um, TFT uh, rotary kind of LCD on the side here. Of course, we have our uh, belt tensioners. Every printer should have those. We have a really nice clean tool head um, with BQ's new micro probe, a very, very tiny, tiny uh, little deployable probe. It's very, very neat in itself. Um, it'll be really cool when they start selling those. I'll probably buy myself a couple of those and put them on some printers and things like that because they're so compact and really, really tiny. And it seems to be very, very accurate. Um, we have our operating system SD card here. So really easy to um, put Clipper on there. Of course, it comes with Clipper, but if you want to make any changes or anything like that, super easy to access your um, SD card there with your operating system, that type of thing. We'll spin this printer around here real quick so you can see the back. So on the back of the printer here, we have some kind of neat stuff. There's two USB ports. You can actually plug in a webcam into this printer right out of the box and uh, use it with Clipper so you can do time lapses and monitor all your prints. Again, it has Clipper, so it has that feature already. We have a LAN cable here, so you can plug into LAN or of course you can use the Wi-Fi. The CB1 does have full Wi-Fi. And then we have an SPI port here. And something that's really neat, again, because this comes with Clipper, BQ actually spent their time and they send you a accelerometer with the printer. So to me that they, it shows to me that they took the effort to really make this a true clipper machine. They could have just thrown clipper on this thing and got it to just work, but they really wanted to put clipper on here for a reason and wanted to utilize all the features. So it's really awesome. They include the um, accelerometer and it plugs into the SPI port here. You mount it to the tool head, run your input shaper. You mount it to the bed, run your input shaper. That is very, very cool. And a big thing that sets this apart from other Cartesian style printers with Marlin or whatever on it. So again, it's a, it, this is a basically a very standard um, Cartesian i3 style printer. Um, however, it's using Biku's kind of robust platform. It's very easy to build, very, very rigid. I had no problems hardware wise. It's like two M5 bolts to assemble the uprights and, um, you got to attach the motor with the lead screw, that type of thing. I, I think I was printing in around 20 minutes or so. It was very, very, very easy. And, um, from a hardware standpoint, to get people into Clipper and to be their very first Clipper machine out of the box, it makes sense to use this platform. So let's um, get this printer turned around. We'll power it up. Uh, we'll start a print and we'll talk about why I really like this printer and why I think BQ is going in the right direction. 
So give me a moment here and uh, I'll get you back here when the printers are ready to go. Before we do final thoughts, I wanted to kind of show off the web interface here that BQ has done. So they uh, obviously shipped this printer with Clipper everything installed, ready to go. Um, the uh, This is main sale uh, web interface that we're looking at right now. And um, they've put some really nice uh, thought and effort into some of the kind of advanced stuff, I guess. Uh, so they, of course, created macros for loading and unloading filament through the web interface here. We have some probe um, functionality here as well. If we go into the uh, config file here, which they have uh, named Big Tree Tech Manta M4P, we can see here that they've already set up the accelerometer for you, which is really good. Uh, we all have that the pins and everything for the back of the printer are already set up here, so it's very easy for you to come in here and um, just plug the accelerometer in and start using input shaper once you go through the clipper documentation on that. And this is what I'm talking about here about easily being able to edit the config file uh, with a clipper machine like this. So if I was going to change the Bowden setup here with a direct drive, um, you know, of my own design or, or some design I found online, I can just come in here and simply change my rotation distance. Uh, if I change my hot end to like a Rapido or uh, some other hot end, I can come in here and I can just change my thermistor, save the config file, and I'm done. I don't have to compile anything, nothing like that. So, uh, again, that's a really big selling point of a clipper machine like this. And BQ has definitely taken their time and made sure that this is fully functional as a clipper machine. So... Let's quickly review some printed parts and then we'll have the printer printing on my table and we'll do some final thoughts. All right, so here we have some example prints. Um, this is a mechanical part that I designed for Bijou, my little tiny printer. And um, like the print quality, again, is what you would expect with Clipper. Very, very clean, very sharp details. Um, the hardware on this printer is really nice. First layer is excellent. No issues at all with this printer. Uh, this is my Rolo Cube. Um, it's very, very nice. This is my slicer profile, so I'm I'm still dialing it in a little bit, um, like pressure advance and things like that. But it's it's very, very nice uh, hardware wise. It's a Cali Cat here. Um, I'm still, uh, like I say, tweaking things, but my first layer is actually really, really sharp and very clean. This is a. Um, Swatch truck. Um, shout out to Zombie Hedgehog on printables. He designed this truck and um, you can see here the wheels turn perfectly on all settings even the 0 0.1 tolerance. So really good tolerances on this printer and um, very very happy with the print quality. So yeah let's uh, jump over to the table here and do some final thoughts. All right, I've queued up a little uh, sample print here and let's just talk about a couple things here with the printer. So this printer is launching as a pre-order uh, of a price of $369 US, which I think is a pretty good uh, price for a machine like this. The next comparable machine, as far as I could tell, would be the Creality S1 Neo. And that's about $300. And again, that doesn't run Clipper. To add Clipper to that machine, uh, Creality, I think, now carry, uh, sells like a Sonic pad or something like that, which adds Clipper functionality, but I think it's like $200 Canadian. I'm not too sure on that one, but again, the big thing here is that Clipper is installed on the mach this machine and it's integrated directly into the mainboard with the CB1 module. It's not an afterthought. It's not some USB addition or anything like that, so that's kind of important to know about. Another feature that um, I didn't discuss here when we were walking around the hardware, and this is kind of cool as well, you'll see there's another square here on this PEI spring steel sheet. You can actually choose to just heat the center of the bed up and not the full bed if you're just printing small models. That's really cool if you want to save power, especially in other countries where power is expensive. There's a switch on the back of the bed. You just flick the switch and it'll only heat up the small part, which is only 100 watts. The entire bed is 240 watts. 
So again, that's really, really cool. You can actually just heat up the center portion of the bed, save power, that type of thing. It's really, really neat. This printer is very quiet. I really appreciate that. I'm someone who absolutely hates uh, printer noise. This is in my office where I work and I need a quiet printer if I'm gonna be using something in my office. So I really appreciate the attention to detail on you know, fan noise and that type of thing. We just seen there the uh, probe working, really, really cool. Um, BQ also does offer a direct drive with their H2 direct drive add-on. We'll work on this printer. They also do offer a um, HDMI clipper screen too, and like I think five inch size and seven inch size potentially. So there's mods coming out. I think they're also coming out with their own webcam as well. So that's neat as well. But to me, the big selling point for this printer is, you know, it has clipper, you, you can do input shaper and all that kind of stuff on it. But what I think is really cool is how mod friendly this printer is now because that because it has clipper. Marlin is such a pain to modify. If you change the extruder on this printer, like let's say I go to Thingiverse and I download some sort of direct drive extruder mod for this printer and I need to change my E-steps or rotation distance and clipper. If this was a Marlin machine, I would have to go out, grab platform IO, modify Marlin and hopefully compile it for this printer and not break anything. Now that this printer has clipper on it out of the box, I go into a text file, I change one number and I save it. I'm done. I can, I can so easily mod this printer with whatever I want, different hot ends, extruders, thermistors. I can completely change anything I want via a text file on this printer. I have 100% control over this printer now. And that might not be important for everybody, but if you want to purchase a entry level printer like this and you want it to grow with you and you want to be able to modify it, this is absolutely the standard in my opinion. And that's what Clipper kind of does on this machine. It's more so much easier to customize this printer. And I think that's probably the biggest takeaway for this printer is the ability to make this printer your own and for this printer to grow with you. Even though I have a whole bunch of custom design printers that I've made and built and that type of thing, it's still nice to have a printer like this to just send parts to, let them print, not have to worry about it, and just have a machine that I can rely on. So even though I might not be designing or building a lot of uh, bed slinger or i3 style printers like this, they definitely still have a place. They're still very entry level friendly and I think it makes a lot of sense for BQ to start here. So to kind of wrap things up a little bit, some cons about this printer, I wish it came with direct drive out of the box. Um, it's not a big deal. Like I say, BQ has their H2 extruder um, direct drive add-on, which you can put onto this printer. But to me, it would just be nicer if it came with direct drive right away. Um, I also don't like the placement of this LCD. The, um, it sticks out way too far. I've bumped into this many a times. It should be down here, in my opinion. It should just go right down here. Um, so that's kind of a nitpick that I have. Um, other than that, I mean, for the price, this is a really, really capable printer. Um, I'm excited to see, you know, people post some mods online and stuff like that for this printer. All sorts of crazy stuff I think will be really possible with this and much easier to do now that it has clipper on it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a quick wrap up of this printer. Um, I think it suits a purpose and I think there's going to be definitely some people interested in it. This is a great way for beginners to get into clipper. And I think that the price point and that type of thing is really, really great for this type of machine. I will have a link to purchase this printer in the description below. Um, it is on a pre-sale on BQ's website right now. So you do save um, like $30, $40, something like that if you purchase it uh, right away. And then I think the normal price for this printer is $399. Um, so yeah, 
Again, feel free to uh, like, share, and subscribe the video. Definitely feel free to join my Discord. Um, I'm probably going to be posting some more about this printer, and I plan on modding this printer myself. I want to, you know, change up the the hot end and and cooling and that type of thing, and maybe try some speed benches and some neat things like like that with this printer. So, if you're all interested in that, uh, feel free to join my Discord. And thanks again, everyone, and a thanks to all the new subscribers and my Patreons. Thank you.